Hey guys, what's going on? Okay, so how to make a tabbed drop down menu in Webflow. I was looking for a solution to this a couple of days ago. I did some Google searches. Quite a lot of people have asked about this on the Webflow forum, so I built one. But rather than describe how to do it in text, I'm doing this little video because it's easier than writing it down. So this is how you do it. It's simple Boolean logic, right? That's all you're doing, you're just using that with some divides. So I've got three menu items. I'm going to refer to these as trigger blocks because they are trigger objects, that each of them is a trigger with interactions, right? So I'm going to call these trigger blocks, but each of these is a simple divide with a fixed width and a fixed height and a fixed padding. And inside is a bit of text. Okay. So these are three divide triggers. But I'm going to call them trigger blocks. And I've titled this one menu 1A, menu 2A, and menu 3A. And they're all visible on start. But hidden are the B blocks. Right? Trigger 1B, trigger 2B, and trigger 3B. And they're all hidden at the start. Right? So each of these trigger blocks has a copy called B, which is hidden, but it's the same dimensions with the same hover color and everything. So when you click on any of the A blocks, they open their own content area and they switch off the A block trigger and make visible the B block trigger. And because the A and B block are identical in size and dimension and everything, you don't see that happen. So I click on A, it opens its content area, it hides trigger block A and shows trigger block B. A opens the content, switches the trigger to B, B closes the content, switches the trigger to A. Yeah. A opens content, switches the trigger to B. B only closes content and switches the trigger to A. A only opens, B only closes. And they're all like that. So open, switch trigger to B. B closes, switches trigger to A. A opens, switches trigger to B. B closes, switches trigger to A. Number three. A opens, switches trigger to B, B closes, switches trigger to A. So they've all got that interaction. The A's all open their content area and switch their own trigger to the B version and the B version closes the content area and switches its own trigger back to A. Also, when you click on any of the A's, they not only open their own content area, but they will they close the content area of the other two because the other two could possibly be open. Right? So all A's, when you click on them, open their own content area, but close the content area of the other two. And not only do they switch their own trigger on clicking of A, they switch their own trigger to B but they switch the other two triggers to A and hide the other two's B triggers if they happen to be opened. Whether they're open or not, that each of the A's do that command. Right? So let's look. There's the A selected. Right? Let's look in the... Um, there's the A. Let's look in the interactions. So the A block, and they're all the same, the A block opens its own content closes the content for number two, closes the content for number three, sh shows its own trigger B and closes its own or hides its own trigger A, shows trigger A for number two and closes or hides trigger B for number two and shows trigger A for number three and hides trigger B for number three, right? So the bottom line is, 
when you click on any of these A's, it opens its own content area, switches its own trigger to B, which will close if I click it, and it switches the other two menus to A and hides their content area. When I click on the B's, it closes its own content area, switches its own trigger to A, and at that point when I click on B, boom, it also switches these two back to A and hides their B. And that way, if I click on a menu item, it switches to its B block, which if I click again will close. But once it's open, I can switch to any of the others, and they're in the open state. So when I click on those, they will open the tab, switching the tab. So their tab's open, it closes the others, and switching all the other blocks to A, so they're in the ready-to-open state. Open. Switch these two to be open, but this is on the close trigger. Open. Switches the other two to open, but this is on the close trigger. Open. Switches the other two to, be op to their open trigger. But this is switched to the close trigger, and that's all you do. It's as simple as that. Now, I've got it so that when I'm showing the content areas underneath, I've got them to hide show, so they're kind of instant switching, like on, off, on, off, on, switch, and it's instant. There's no fade. Uh, but you could, you could use drop down and drop up instead for each of these, and then, you know, it would drop down, drop back up. But if one's down and you do the other one, it's would drop down while the other one would, would drop up and you get a crossfade. Yeah? Well, right, that's how you do that. And obviously, these content areas, these the trigger blocks are simple divides. The content areas are simple divide. So inside this divide, you can make the menu as content rich as you want. You can put images, layout, sub menus in there, have it any way you want. And that's, that's just it. It's as simple as that. If you look at the structure of it, I've got a, a section, there's the section, inside it is the container to keep you know the width from left to right and so it you know, doesn't go right off to the edges of the page and in that is a drop down wrapper, it's just a divide called drop down wrapper that's um, going to be the width of the thing and inside that are the, there are three menus so there are six triggers in total the A and B for each one. There they all are, they're just three divides um, and they're B copies, so six divides in total. And they are set as inline blocks. And that way they work across horizontally from left to right. Yeah? I don't even need to make them left or something like that. They just naturally work their way from left to right. Whereas if they're the other type of block like that, they won't work from left to right. Uh, and then the drop down content again, there's simple divides. Yeah, simple divides. Easy peasy, son. And that's that. Obviously, I've coloured them. I coloured them so that I could check which drop down area was open. Okay, so that's why everything's colour coordinated. I was using the colours to work out the Boolean logic for it. Okay, but um, obviously, this could all be white. So the drop down is just white with a border. The other thing you could do is you could make the background fade down when this menu drops open so that the entire background of the site fades to a sort of semi-transparent black yeah, by just having a, an overlay, on, um, a hidden um, overlay that's black that covers, you know, a divide that covers the whole screen. Um, above all the content and it's black and then when you click this you could activate that to come in at a certain opacity to just dip the background down you could do all sorts of things like that and you could make these as I said, instead of doing instant switching show hide like I've got it you could make them crossfade and be drop downs instead of show hides like I've got make them do whatever you want alright and that's it 
That's how you do it. Okay. I don't know how I don't know how I can give this away. Uh, I don't know if there's a way to share this on on Webflow. If you know how to do that, tell me and I'll do it. All right. See you later.